Welcome back to my lure box. In today's video, we're heading into the canals to chase some fish around these pontoons. I've got the Crush City Creepers. Now, these things have got a whole load of action built into that tiny little body. We're going to throw them around on light gear. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I've got heaps of tips for you. Let's get into the video. <laughs> There we go. There goes my there goes my pack of plastics. <laughs> I don't want to lose my pack of plastics. Oh, what's that? It's a decent brim actually. I need my pack of plastics back though because I'm going to go through them today. I reckon. grab that it is so blowy out here today oh, but I nearly lost my lures it's a real challenge but it's worth it because there's plenty of fish hanging around these pontoons still take a look at that that's a beautiful brim for in these parts I'm gonna to talk to you about how I do it and some of the little tricks I've got for you that can make all the difference today. When you're hitting these pontoons, the shadows here are really important. You wanna be in the shadows, but if there's a pole at the back, that's where you wanna be going. You wanna get your lure right to the back near that pole. Because those brim are dancing up and down beside it. That's what you want. And they'll be sitting in there for cover right in the darkest parts behind those poles and down in the shadows there so if you're just casting to the fringes you're going to miss a lot of those fish so get your lures right to the back of those poles that's your best starting point and it means that you might end up you know getting wrapped around it a little bit or snapped off now and then but if you want to be in with a shot and get those numbers it's got to be right around the back right up close to those poles and a really slow sinking bait's the way to go You don't just want it plummeting to the bottom with too much weight. It doesn't give the brim a chance to get inquisitive, to come over, to peck at it as it's falling, all that kind of stuff. Yep, there's a the fish. Just a slow, slow roll and I'm just fishing. There's pontoons here and there's cover that I'm coming to, but this is a little windblown bay here in this canal. And right at the end of it, on the sand, are these feeding brim. There they are. See you, buddy. And the key is just not to work it too fast. They're, they're interested, but if you're ripping it out too fast, you don't see any bites. Oh, yep, got one. There we go. Oh, come off. And he's ripped it to bits too. Look at that. That's why you want a certain style of keeper sometimes with these super TPE materials. Anyway, we can talk about that later on. I'm getting back in there for another one. <laughs> he was right down the bottom, that fish. Oh, yep, there's a fish. Taken off the bottom too. 
A beauty. It's a nice one too. Those bigger fish can be down the bottom. Often they're down the bottom underneath the smaller ones right up the top. This is a great fish for in here. Big yellow fins. Oh, what a beauty. It's completely just inhaled that, um, the creeper. I'm gonna show you, hopefully I can get it in. I've only got really, really light line. Just gonna spot lock and drop my drag back because I've pulled it away from the pontoon. Wow, that's a good one. Netting brim. <laughs> it's, it's a bit tricky because I've got the, the wind blowing me hard in here. I've just pressed spot lock so it'll correct it in a second. But what I'm gonna do in this video is take you through a whole heap of tips on how to get your brim fishing and your canal fishing going. I've got heaps of good stuff for you. So I'll get this fish in. I'm gonna just keep the camera rolling this morning for the next 15 minutes or so. And um, 10 or 15 tips that are, are gonna make the difference for you with your numbers and hopefully the size of your fish like this one. Oh, there we go. I'll give you a good look at this one. What a beautiful fish. And the way that it's taken this lure gives you every chance to get her in. This is the kind of big brim that you want when you're chasing them in these canals on the Gold Coast. Have a look at that. What a cracker. Big beefy head on it, chunky, chunky teeth, big crunches. <laughs> and that creeper is right down there. I'll see if I can get that out. Brim fishing can be as simple as you like. But to get the big ones consistently, get good numbers of fish, there's some details that I reckon are worth sharing. That's what we're gonna do this morning. See you, mate. All right, we might as well kick, the, kick it off and I'll show you what I'm fishing with and how I'm doing it. These are the new Crush City Plastics by Rapala. And I'm fishing with a lure that they've just released called a creeper, and that's it there. It's a little curl tail soft plastic made of super TPE material, which, which means it's really, really stretchy, okay? And you're just rigging it on a tiny little jig head. Not just any jig head, I'm going super light today. So that's like a 1 20th of an ounce. I'll give you a look at it. And it's got like a little hidden weight in there that's like a keeper and then a tiny little weight at the front. And that is the way you wanna fish these things. If you're fishing with a one quarter ounce, because that's how you've chased flathead in the past or whatever, it can be too fast for the brim. You want the brim to have as much time to come over, compete with each other, get inquisitive, and then bite these things as that tail's working and these little legs underneath are vibrating. And so a really light jig head like that is the way to go. Now there's different types of jig heads that suit these lures a lot better. I'll see if I've got, I've got some cool stuff in here to show you actually. So that's the one that I'm using, which is a TT Headlocks. And I'd say they're, they're actually not the best um, jig head to be running with these, but I haven't gone and got the new, there's some little ones by Daiwa. And if you know some other jig heads that suit this TPE material really well, just put it in the comments for everyone to share and get your ideas around it. This is a really cool little product that Starlo's son has released. He makes them up himself and these are little resin heads starlo tackle resin heads and i got these through their facebook page i got them online these little resin heads have a great little keeper for tpe material and they're unweighted basically unweighted so you can fish stuff skipped in under the surface uh, under the cover so that's a great little one if you're wanting to chase stuff especially in natural cover i might do some of that at the end of this video if i get a chance but um these are the types of jig heads that you want. You want chemically sharpened super pinny hooks, okay? And you wanna keep checking that and testing it. And if you haven't, my little hook files are the way to go. And there's, there's a super fine side if you're hitting the pontoons and things and brushing up against snags and rocks that you can just really softly with these, make them really pinny, there you go. So that's all I'm doing. And the reason you want it like that is a lot of the time, this is not under load. You're not reeling this in. This is, 
this is just being left un, um, unimpeded by the line and your reel. You're not putting any tension on the lure and it's working way better like that and that's what gets the bite. So you need that really sharp hook. Okay. We're gonna keep fishing, I'll keep talking you through it. But basically, one of the little things about these jig heads is, the Daiwa ones have got these little, these little spikes that come up and down and they tend to hold this Super TPE way better than the, than the TT headlock system just because they are really, really soft, super soft. I just like those other ones a little bit better for keeping it. So one of the things you can do to try and help keep that plastic up because you'll get hit and they'll pull it down if you don't have a really good locking system on there. One of the things you can do before you rig it, just grab another hook, pierce the top of it, pull it over that jig head eyelet, like this, hopefully, there we go. Pull it over there, just help it down. You might need to really puncture the plastic because it's so, it's, it's so stretchy, it doesn't even want to break. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. All I've done is just pierced the plastic and pulled it over the little toe point on the front of the jig head. That helps to keep it a little bit better. So instead of it getting ripped down, it just wants to stay up there a little bit better. But ideally you want to be using those little jig heads that have got the spikes on them for these super TPE material. That little 1 12th and 1 20th of an ounce jig head is, is absolutely key for chasing these brim around pontoons. The slower the weight, the more bites you're going to get. And they're still going, I'm just, I'm drifting around here because of this wind. But they're still biting at it as I'm going. One of the, I suppose one of the big things that ruins people's catch rates is that they're just in a hurry. And, and fishing too fast around these pontoons. It's, it's really exciting to keep hitting the next spot and the next spot, but the reality is if you've got a big pontoon or if you've got extra cover like a barbecue boat or a jet ski ramp or anything, they're going to be under there and you just need to be patient. The little drains and the boat ramps and things like that, they're great spots. Whoa. Again, they're on net. Oh, mate, they're just, they're all over this thing. I'm on there now. That's a better fish too. And there's a school of about 10 of them out there and they're all really good fish. There's a team of maybe 15, 20 to, some of them are up in the 30 centimetre range, which for, you know, a Gold Coast brim, it's just, it's great stuff. I'm only fishing really light line, so I've got to be a little bit patient with <laughs> Now that I've hooked this fish, I can't hurry it in because I'm just gonna snap it off. So that was actually caught. Cool. I wasn't reeling it in. I was just letting it sink down off the end of a drain. And when I looked at it, even with my polarized sunnies, I couldn't even see a fish in there. But often these fish are sitting right off the second drop just out of sight. This is a beautiful big, big brim, this one. It's still got a mate going with it. <laughs> a tiny little, tiny little uneducated brim's coming out with it. But this big brim here, this would be about a six year old, I reckon. Five or six year old fish. Let's have a look. This is great stuff. Have a look at this. There you go, what a beautiful fish. And I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you, I'm sort of doing my best to give you a look at it and that creeper in its mouth. But it's got big shoulders on it. They are just a stunning fish in these canals. There's that little creeper on the 20, on, it's a 1 20th of an ounce. I'll just pop that out. There you go. It's the new Creeper by Rapala and it's pulled it down, you can see that. But I'm willing to put up with all that to get these good fish. So I can handle that, mate. It does take a really, really busy little paddling wriggle tail on the end to get some of these really big fish. They're educated, they've seen lots of little lures. What a fish. And that was just off one of the drains right beside the end of a boat ramp. He's kind of torn it a little bit. 
but I can repair it, just re-rig it. These are full of action, these little things. They've got these little appendages underneath that as that goes through the water, these things vibrate beautifully and that tail works and that is a key. If you're too light with some other plastics, that tail won't wiggle or it'll spiral on the way down. You don't want any of that. You want a straight fall like that, super slow. And then as you're bringing it in, you want that tail pumping the whole time, up and down. So as you're retrieving and as you're dropping, you want those tails working. It's part of the drawer of these really soft plastics that are being released. Okay, we're gonna keep going, see if we can get a few more. Bring you around so you can see what I'm doing a little bit, hopefully. Here we go. I'm just fishing with, I think it's like a, a four or a six pound braid. And then I've got just six pound fluorocarbon leader, which is light enough for me. You can go lighter, especially if it's a complete glass out and it's really clear conditions. But um, today there's a bit of color in the water. We've had some rain and this wind's stirring up the edges. The other thing as well, sometimes when the bite is, is aggressive like that and you're getting multiple bites, you don't have to really hit the fish. You can kind of just wind into them. Because if, you, if you're hitting fish and they're not quite taking it, you're pulling it away from them. I'm getting hit right now, actually. It's just getting tap, 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 and the line is not even tight. But I can feel it through this little rod. So that creeper is down near the bottom, just crawling and the tail's wiggling. It's that really slow retrieve that's key. With my jack fishing, if I'm humming the plastic and I've got the vibe like really hard and it's kicking really hard, that can trigger that reaction bite from a jack. But with these brim, you just want that tail moving and, and not busting itself to try and keep up with your retrieve. You just want it tempting those fish. With brim, it's often not the retrieve. It's actually the fall down into the area and then leaving it on the bottom, especially if you've got cranker crabs, you know, or you've got um, even topwater lures. Just leaving a topwater lure in against the snag for a brim is key. Now I'm getting hit now. It's almost taken probably 30 seconds. They're hitting it now. Come on, boys. <laughs> you kind of you can't just want that big one to come over and smack it straight away, but it's not, it's not always the case. And these canals, they're, they're actually loaded with small fish as well, so it's, it can be a challenge if, you, if you're trying to sift through those small fish to get to the bigger ones. The patience is the game. It really plays on you. I think I'm on here. There's one there. You can see the line ticking, hopefully, in this, with the sun behind it. I might be on. Yeah, I'm on. So you're just watching for that line to tick or stop. Sometimes as it's sinking and you're watching it sinking down, if it stops on the way down, that's it. It's got it in its mouth. There you go. That was taken in the shadow at the back pole there which is just typical for a brim. There you go, and they've got those chomping teeth in there where they just crunch up little shrimp and crustaceans, just like my creeper. You know, it's not the most exciting fishing to watch because it's so slow on days like this when you've got all this wind and the fish are right down the bottom. Some days I come out here and I'm fishing, as soon as it drops past the bottom line of that pontoon, the brim just race over, grab it, and you're on, away you go. But it doesn't mean that you can't still enjoy a session on the water and catch plenty of fish. You just need to slow down and find your fish. They're down the bottom.
light line's great because you can get those longer casts. You can stay away from the fish, especially early, early morning where you've got your shadow being cast a long distance away from yourself. If you're having to cast past your shadow early morning, you need that light line. When it's clear, it's better. And it also allows you to sort of skip stuff in too. The really light jig head, the really light line, you can skip plastics in so that they're slowing down as they get to the pontoon and nudge it, get right up beside it. I'm trying to be quiet with the motor. I'm not punching around at sort of speed 10 or, you know, I'm trying to be as stealthy as I can. Any, any kind of stealth that you can be better with, it definitely pays. Even with the wind, I try to do the right thing and just not be too punchy on the motor. Still getting hit as this is going. They're just, they're not quite just sucking it right back. These have got a scent in built in them. So I don't have to cream it all with scent, whatever. So as they're coming in, they're getting a really good look at it. Hopefully I can pull one off the end of this pontoon here. Yep. Oh, that's a better fish too. I've still got it. Yeah. Oh, that was about 30 seconds. <laughs> that's what it's taking. I've got to give them the chance. It's got to get right to the bottom today. Boy, it's fun when they grab it though. And I can feel it through this rod. Even on a slack line, I can just feel that tap. And that's all it was. It's a, it can be just the most subtle of taps. There you go, buddy. There it is. Beautiful. And having a really light rod is the way to go. You want something with a bit of feel. It was only when I went to fishing these Zodius rods that I started to pick up on the detail and it, it really does make a difference. This is a 270 UL, so ultralight Zodius by Shimano. I've just got a tiny little 1000 Stratacon here and having that light set up you can feel the taps and the little picks and the pecks that the brim go, go with makes for a lot of fun you can feel it even with a slack line it's amazing to feel it like that and to be able to fish that kind of thing one of the things that is really effective to do when you start to get dialed in with this type of fishing is to lay your line down and try to keep the least amount of line up off the water as you can you still want to be sort of relatively in contact with it in case you get hit. But um, if you've just got line from your cast sort of like wafting around in the wind, it's just going to be pulling on that lure and giving it a really unnatural fall. Okay. Yeah, so that's it. There we go there. I love these really natural colours that they've got. You can see how free moving that tail is. Just even the wind pulling on it's getting it going. It's just talking about stealth. I started to touch on the stealth. I've seen it so often in here as I've been filming and going along pontoons and things with the GoPro that any change in the speed where you just bump from zero to one and a half or two in these little canals, because it's so shallow, the bait spooks at that and so do the brim. And the really big fish are aware of that. I've learned that from my jack fishing as well. You wanna be as smooth on the motor as you can and as smooth in the boat as you can. You might be able to see, this is a key for my jack fishing when I'm in the, in the canals doing stuff. That's a little foam dampener. So when I'm changing rods, I'm not tinking the boat. I've seen the bait and the fish get spooked by putting rods down or dropping the end of the net down once I've caught a fish. I'm really careful with all that stealth to try and um, just sort of limit my presence in these canals so I've got the best chance at catching multiple fish in the same area. Now it looks like there's not a lot going on here but the shadow that's been cast by this tree, this palm, Often at the end of the bays, if you've got that kind of thing playing out, it's worth having a throw into that shadow. Just going to see if there's anything sort of tucked out in there. Yep, straight away, bang. Oh, yep, come on. 
Just grab it properly, boys. They're after it. They're bow waving it. Got it. Whee! There's about 10 in there. So they're all schooled up. There's nothing in there. Come on, mate. He's crazy. I didn't even give him a chance to fight. He jumped out the water and I surfed him back to the boat. Which means I might even get a shot at a second one down in there. But they're in those shadow lines. Oh, he's not happy about it. <laughs> not <laughs> happy about it. I'm glad I, I'm glad I didn't get that juice all over my shirt <laughs> or the screen. <laughs> it's a really obvious spot, you know. I can see brim up in the shallows here. They're a lot harder to catch when there's no shadow. They're super wary. There's about 10 of them up there though. I'll see if I can stir them up. Often what'll happen is they'll spook. So I might throw up on the sand. Oh no, they've just the line, the shadow, the line shadow as it's gone over them. It's so clear. They were off, they were moving before I even got the lure to land. And it could have even been, even though the sun's you know, throwing my shadow of my rod this way. It could have even been my high rod tip there where I just cast over my shoulder. Maybe a better cast would have been like low so they can't get as good a look at it. See if I can do it here. Better, here he comes, he's after it. Bang, got him. That was better. And it's not a bad fish. I got to see the whole thing that was just <laughs> Fantastic fishing, not a bad fish at all. And that low rod cast, like these are the small details and I'm so glad I could show you that because the small details, they really do make a difference, especially with these big fish in the clear canals. Wish I could learn to handle one properly. All right, so there you go. There's a little bit of water on the lens, sorry, but the, cre <laughs> the creeper's in there and uh, that's really what you want with a little plastic. You want it to be able to be fished really slowly and when a big fish gets a look at it, they still want it and they move in on it. It's not spooking them, it's turning them on. And that fish there, that fish there would be around that 30 centimetre mark, I reckon. Come on, mate, come on. There you go. Creeper, I'll fix that up. Beautiful brim. Are you going to play the game, mate? Because I'll put you straight back. There you go. These all just pop back into place. You just roll them back in, make sure that they've... They're, they're a great design. And it's no surprise you've got two fantastic fishermen, and they're the guys behind the design of this thing. Here they come. Come and grab it. Come and grab it, boys. Oh, he grabbed it initially. Those shadows just make such a difference for the fish's confidence. Any time there's a shadow that they can come out of, they're just, they're in a different frame. I love it. Usually a spot like this, you can peer in between the little um, bubbles from the pontoon and you can see down through the water and see the fish, but it's not the case at all today. A lot of them are so deep down there if they're not right up on the shallows in the last of the, of the shadows from the palm trees, they're down deep under these pontoons. And it's taken 30 seconds for this little thing to call them in on the way to the bottom, and then they're coming over and having a nip at it. Ideally, you're not slapping it against that pontoon. You know, soft plastics that don't have the lead weight exposed, they're a bit more forgiving with the sound when it hits that pontoon, but that can spook the brim. They get to know what's going on with soft plastic lures. If the lead weight's just skipping and then banging the pontoon, it can often spook, spook the better fish. The small fish might not pick up on it, but the bigger ones, the ones that you're after, they definitely know what's going on. So I try to just land it just shy of the pontoon edge. And usually with brim, they're inquisitive enough to come out and get it. Jacks are different. You need it right underneath for a jack, but the brim are really inquisitive, especially if there's numbers of them. Let's see what happens here. I've got a drain with barely any shadows, and then I've got a beauty over here covered by this big poinciana. Let's see, see where they're at. Super slow retrieve to let it get down into that bottom bit there, into the pit. Yep, that was a good take, that. 
Bang, got it. Flatty. Flatty in the drain. I got a lure that looks just like you, mate. It catches your grandma. Good fun though. Clunk. <laughs> I'm going right up into it. Can't help myself. The drag on this, I've just got it pretty loose. You know, if you're fishing against poles and oysters and things, you might tighten up a bit. But these little hooks, when you've got them nice and sharp, it's enough just to pin that soft flesh around the brim's mouth and you don't want to pull through that. So uh, it's a sporting style of fishing and it's a lot of fun. Folks, if you love your brim fishing, you want to see a few more, I've got heaps of this stuff. Check out this compilation of videos up here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.